What can you tell me about this new program that Metro's kicking off in the schools? Well, a few months back, we looked at some of our prevention efforts and noticed that uh, up to that point in time, most of our prevention efforts were geared towards adults. However, a great majority of our victims are juveniles. And uh, the majority of those cases, at least 80 to 85 percent of those cases, are acquaintance related. And what that means is the victim knows their offender in some way, shape, or form. It's either a family member, um, a babysitter, teacher, caretaker, uh, boyfriend or girlfriend. So they know their offender um, most of the time. These are not stranger offenses. When we looked at that, uh, we realized that we had a great opportunity to go talk to our juvenile victims and the parents of our juveniles and discuss some of the prevention efforts that can, can curb some of these violent attacks. Mm -hmm. And w when people hear some of the numbers behind this, they're, they're often shocking. I mean, the number of people who are attacked by someone that they already know, what, what's that number like? It's 80 to 85 percent, and that's both a local statistic and a national statistic, and that's been standard for many, many years. It is a myth that the majority of sexual assaults, or what people know as rape, is stranger-related. That does happen, but that's usually the minority of the cases. Like I said, 80 to 85 percent of our sexual assaults, the victim knows their offender. And when you talk about acquaintance rape, I mean, that ranges from someone you know casually up to what? It, it ranges from anything of a, a first-time date where they, they just met online and they're meeting for the first time. It, it could be they go out um, to a club with a group of people and they meet somebody and get introduced at that club and they hang out for that day, all the way up to and including a parent, a sibling, a cousin, a first, second-line family member. So Metro noticed that you, you really needed a prevention outreach toward the younger end of the scale. I mean, who, who is your, who are you trying to reach with this program? We're trying to reach not only our juvenile victims and potential victims, but also the parents of those juveniles so that we can dispel sexual assault myths with facts and give them the skills that they need to be able to prevent becoming, from becoming a victim and also to be able to protect themselves and their children. <laughs> So what, what are some of the things and some of the approaches you're going to, are going to take when you go to the schools? Well, we established a very good working relationship, not only with the Rape Crisis Center, which has a few uh, prevention programs that are already established within the Clark County School District, but we also made good contacts within the Clark County School District. We've been working together with both of those agencies uh, to make sure that we're all on the same page, that we're attacking this, uh, this prevention effort as a team concept. There are two different prevention programs that are presented within the school district from the rape crisis, those for elementary school students and those for middle and high school students. In addition to that, uh, Metro Police has put together some prevention programs, one geared towards parents of toddlers and young children, and what we're looking for there is to have parents of these young children attend this two-hour presentation so we can give them tips and the skills they need to protect their children and again displace the myths with facts. The other program that we have again is a two-hour program that is geared towards parents and their teens and what we would like to ha see happen there is have the parents attend this program with their teen children so that we can educate both of them on how to protect themselves and it has everything from prevention efforts and prevention tips from internet safety, dating violence, date rape drugs, um, and, and family type sexual assaults. But both of these are pretty much a one-time only, two-hour, come parent and children attend the event. The program that we have geared towards the community, yes, that's what it is. It's a one-time, um, two-hour presentation. However, we give them so much information and we tell them where to go to get more information, not only on the internet, but within uh, other organizations within the community. There are numerous amounts of resources for our victims. We have the Rape Crisis Center and many other victim advocate agencies within the community. Um, we also have, if in fact somebody does become a victim, um, we have other uh, resources available to them, such as counseling and uh, financial resources if needed. So this is the sort of thing Metro would try and reach out to each school once a year, once a semester? I mean, how does that work? Well, the majority of the work is done by the Rape Crisis Center because it's a program that they've had in, in effect for a couple of years now. It's working well. It's being well received by the Clark County School District. What we're trying to do is work with the Rape Crisis Center um, so that we're, it's a team approach. We're attacking it as a team. 
We give them information that they may want or need from us. If possible, we can attend some of the programs. They are in the school district almost every single day of the week because there are so many schools within the valley. We're also working with the school district and providing uh, some of their counselors and some of their other employees with training in regards to mandated reporting issues, some of the prevention efforts that they can use, some red flags that they can observe to ensure that uh, any of their students or people or other um, kids that they come into contact with, they're aware of what to be looking for in case somebody is a victim. Okay. Suppose I'm a parent and I say, you know what, this is something I'm interested in. Who do I reach out to to you know, see if we can arrange for one of these seminars? We prefer to do it in some type of a group setting. Mm -hmm. That can be anything from a church organization, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, YMCA, any type of a, a group of, say, you know, 15 or more people mm -hmm. that they can put together um, and contact myself here at the uh, uh, Crimes Against Youth and Family section of Metro Police and see if we can get something scheduled for them. Uh, we'd prefer if they had a, a facility that they mm -hmm. can use, but we can provide everything else. We will have all the uh, PowerPoint, the computer, we have the projector, we have everything we need. We just need the people to contact us and tell us, hey, we're interested in putting on this program, let's get something scheduled. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know how to ask this, but um, whenever the, these sorts of subjects comes up, the Parents always realize their kids need to be educated about these things, but as soon as they hear the word sex as part of sexual, they, some of them are hesitant and are worried that, you know, especially with younger children, that there's an age-appropriate response. I mean, you, you, you've all have been, um, thought of that ahead of time and have... Absolutely. That's uh, something that's already been discussed and addressed with the pr programs that are within the Clark County School District. They are age appropriate, mm -hmm. as well as the programs that we've uh, presented towards the community. We've made sure that uh, the people who are we, are we are wanting to come to these presentations, it's geared towards those people. It's age appropriate for the people who will be attending. We understand that it's a sensitive topic. Sex is not something that's openly discussed um, you know, w within, within uh, amongst friends and sometimes even amongst family members. Mm -hmm. We understand it's a sensitive topic. However, it is a topic that does need to be addressed. Sexual assaults are occurring. They need to understand how to prevent it. And more importantly, they need to understand the importance of reporting it if in fact they do become a victim. Because not only do we want to get the victims the help that they need mentally, emotionally, and physically, but we want to be able to prevent these things from happening again. And the best way to prevent it is to put the attackers in jail so that they can't go attack somebody else. And I assume that the essential message for all age groups is something along the lines of your body is your own. If someone <laughs> touches you inappropriately, speak up. Absolutely. It's, it's very important for our victims to come forward. That is the first step in the investigative process. That is the key to preventing future crimes from happening again. Rarely does any one sexual offender offend only one time and get caught. These are repeat offenders. It's absolutely vital that our victims come forward, let us know what happened. We will investigate it. They don't need to be afraid that they're not going to be believed. They don't need to be afraid that nothing's going to happen. We will investigate it. They will be interviewed. We will get them the resources they need to get the help that they need, and we will do everything that we can to put the offender in jail so that they can't attack anybody else again. All right. When did you guys start? We have started already. We've done some of the um, training with the Rape Crisis Center. We have some training occurring with the Clark County School District um, in the middle of January. And we've done some training with our community-oriented policing, trying to get apartment managers to get their tenants together and maybe present these programs at um, their community uh, centers within the apartment complex. Mm -hmm. And we're just now trying to reach out to the public and let them know that we have these presentations. We'd like people to start contacting us so we can come to their agency and, and speak to them about these efforts. So just so I get it right, you've trained the trainers. And Correct. now you're trying to send those trained people to the community. Not only that, but in addition to that, we want people from different community organizations to contact us and let us know that they're interested in us coming to them and giving them this presentation on the prevention efforts. So as far as get, getting it to the people, we're still waiting on that part of the process. Correct. All right, but soon? Yes, absolutely. We're ready to go. We just need people to contact us and tell us we are ready to receive this presentation. 
we'll set the appointment and we'll come out to their to their location and, and give them the presentation. All right. Is there anything else uh, you think we need to get across to just folks about this? Just stressing the importance of, of reporting. Sexual assault is the most underreported violent crime there is. The most recent DOJ uh, case statistics just came out December 18th and stated that approximately only 40% of our victims actually report, which means in turn that 60% of our victims don't report. We will never be able to put these offenders away if our victims don't report, and our victims will never be able to get the help that they need if they don't report it to us. It's absolutely imperative that they report it to the police so that we can get them the help they need and we can put these offenders away. Okay. Mr. Higdell for one second, 